Joining me now is House Judiciary's Republican Congressman Guy Rushenthaler and former Deputy Independent Counsel Saul Weisenberg. First to you, Congressman, how did you vote? Liz, uh, first, thanks for having me on. Always appreciate it. As always, call me Guy. And, and let me just say this. I want to unequivocally state that what happened last Wednesday was wrong. It was unacceptable. It was un-American. And those that broke the law should be held accountable. I've condemned political violence all summer long, and I'm condemning it right now. Now, as for the vote today, Liz, I voted no on impeachment. Oh, in New York. And it's very oh, yeah. simple why I did it. I did it because the nation needs healing right now. We need to come together. This vote today, just as Kevin McCarthy no, said on your clip, here. just as that, just as Kevin said, this further divides the country. It does nothing to heal us. We need to be coming together, not only in the Republican Party, but more importantly, as an American people right now. This vote today okay. just continue to fl fan the flames of the of the divisions that we have. Okay, uh, Saul Weisenberg, next to you. Let's show the viewer what the president said uh, just a week ago. Uh, Saul, they voted to impeach. Ten Republicans, led by Liz Cheney, voted to impeach. The president made statements, if you don't fight like hell, not going to have a country anymore. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. You can never take back the country with weakness. you got to take it back with strength. Is that enough for the Senate to convict him on? Uh, yes, it is enough. Uh, it's not enough to convict him of the crime of incitement to riot or advocacy of overthrow of the government because uh, it's not imminent enough under Supreme Court case law, but that would not apply to an impeachment, uh, to an impeachment proceeding or to a trial because, as you know, you don't have to have an actual crime uh, to be impeached. Okay, so back to you, Congressman. Senator Mitch McConnell now saying it won't go to the Senate until the day before the inauguration. What's the mood, mood now? Will the Democrat, with a thin majority in the Senate, do they have the votes to convict? Well, we'll have to see when it goes to the Senate. There's got to be a trial. But the fact is, is that this won't even be heard in the Senate until after Joe Biden is inaugurated next week. We're within a week of a new president coming in, and the Democrats couldn't help themselves to divide this country by bringing forward this vote. This is not what we need right now. And just, um, just as we were just talking about, it's very suspect whether or not this even meets the legal definition of indictment, let alone the fact that due process has completely been railroaded. There were no hearings on this. There was no fact-finding mission. There was no defense from the president like we had in the last impeachment. And frankly, every impeachment we've had in this country before, this is unprecedented in the time of in the speed of this, and it's also, I believe, incredibly unprecedented in the fact that we're doing this a week before we have okay. a new president. Can I respond Senator to McConnell, that? Saul, yeah, you can. Go ahead. Senator McConnell said he, he's not made a final decision on how he'll vote. Take it on, Saul. Go ahead. Well, they're here's the way I view it. They're reporting from the scene of the crime, and they've seen the videos. They really don't need to have any fact-finding, any detailed fact-finding here. The detailed fact-finding will come uh, in, during the various cr uh, criminal investigations that are going on for seditious conspiracy. So you had a special event here. You had an unprecedented ev event, which we've talked about, where, as Liz Cheney said, he summoned the crowd, he assembled the crowd, and he lit the fuse and sent them over during a solemn constitutional proceeding that is uh, called for in the Constitution. So that is unprecedented. So I, I think it's a little bit ironic uh, for, um, for the president to be and his people to be complaining that the Congress is being divisive here when it was his unprecedented in American history action that got us here. The, now, uh, the having said breaking, that, there is no mm -hmm. question that there's going to be divisiveness as a result of this. Okay, we're just getting breaking news. The president is putting out now a YouTube statement saying, please, no violence, stop the violence. Okay, let's watch the action today. Let's listen to what happened on the floor. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. Defend this Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic, including Donald J. Trump. Some say the riots were caused by Antifa. There is absolutely no evidence of that.
Okay, one congressman said if inciting a domestic terrorist assault is not a reason to impeach them, what is? Uh, Matt Gates, Congressman Matt Gates, Congressman uh, Reschenthaler, really sent the House chamber into a frenzy with this speech. Watch. I denounce political violence from all ends of the spectrum, but make no mistake, the left in America has incited far more political violence than the right. Okay, let's be clear. The Capitol riot, Congressman, was about stopping a vote certification. It was an attack on the government. That's different from the riots that took place last year in numerous uh, cities and towns across the country. Your reaction to what Matt Gates said? I would have to say, look, mob violence is mob violence. Just as Matt Gates said, it doesn't matter where the ideology might fall on that mob. It's still violence. It's still wrong, it's still unacceptable, and we need to condemn it. I condemn the violence that we saw from Antifa all summer long. I don't know of any mainstream media outlet that was asking Democrats to condemn that violence. Now that we had unacceptable behavior and criminal acts on Wednesday, I again, just with my Republican colleagues, are condemning it. So I think that I, I don't want to speculate as to um, everything that what Matt Gates was saying, but I can say that we've been very clear and consistent. We are the party of law and order. We have been okay. consistent in calling out violence. I wish my Democrat colleagues would have been consistent during the summer when Antifa was burning cities and businesses to the ground. Okay, again, those that we've been covering that when they started, it's distinct from an attack on the government. That's what the president, well, that's the House vote to impeach well, him today. Well, well, well um, Liz, Antifa, do, Antifa was attacking federal buildings. They were literally blinding federal officers Understood, but this was lasers. an attack on Congress as they're trying to certify the vote. I didn't mean to talk over you, forgive me, but this is a, a, an attack on when they were trying to certify the vote. That's something, that's and another I, and next I condemn, level up. And I, I, I hear what you're saying. I attacks, Liz, and so have my Republican colleagues. Okay. We've been incredibly consistent. Heard you. It was wrong Wednesday. Okay, it was gotcha. wrong all summer long.